Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and it's Tuesday, July 18th. Tesla has revealed the Cybertruck seats in a new video featuring the Butt Robot, which is a robot Tesla made to simulate someone sitting in the seat. The machine replicates the impact of a lifetime of use by performing 50,000 actions, pressing in and getting up from the seat. It's the first time we've seen the Cybertruck seats since Tesla has moved into production, which more than likely means that this is the production version of the seat. The seats are actually fairly large, which is an important indicator for trucks. Tesla has announced that it started production of the Cybertruck last weekend, and it's expected to start deliveries, likely to employees first, coming this quarter. Tesla is rumored to have partnered with Samsung to produce a new self-driving chip based on a 4 nanometer node for Tesla's hardware 5.0. Back in 2016, Tesla started building a team of chip architects to design a super powerful and efficient chip to achieve full self-driving in consumer vehicles without additional hardware. In 2019, Tesla finally unveiled the chip, claiming a factor of 21 improvements in frame per second processing versus the previous generation, which was powered by Nvidia chips. Tesla has worked with Samsung on hardware 3.0 and has been rumored to be working on them on hardware 4.0, but now the Korean Economic Daily reports that Tesla has partnered with Samsung to use their latest 4 nanometer node technology to build hardware 5.0. It was also reported that Tesla has also secured a large order for its self-driving chip from Taiwan's TSMC. Now, the report doesn't make it clear if Tesla plans to work with both Samsung and TSMC on the next-gen chip or just Samsung. Tesla plans to deploy something called a cyber canopy at a new supercharger station, leading some to wonder if this will be a new Tesla product. Elon Musk has been promising that Tesla will power all supercharger stations with solar and batteries for quite a long time, but the rollout has been significantly delayed. And now new plans for a supercharger station in Canton, Massachusetts, reveal that Tesla plans to deploy solar with it. Now, while the plans mention the new Cyber Canopy by name, it's unclear what it would look like. Now, whether or not this will be a new product for municipal or residential purchase is open for speculation, and we love a little bit of that and good fun. We recently reported that Tesla was looking to bring new solar and energy products to market, so it's not impossible. Tesla has been releasing products like the Cyber Vault that are not associated with the Cyber Truck, but more with Tesla as a brand. So... The Cyber Canopy could be yours someday for the low, low price. Of... We get a rare look at Tesla's early designs for the Cybertruck that didn't make it, and some insights into what led to the electric truck's polarizing design. We'll give you a hint. It was Elon. <laughs> Walter Isaacson, a biographer who has been embedded with Elon Musk for years, ahead of the upcoming biography launch later this year, has given us the insights. Now, with the excerpt, Isaacson released a picture from inside Tesla's design studio in L.A. that includes a bunch of early drawings for the truck. We can see that the sharper angles were always in the plan, but it looks like Tesla ended up pushing that concept to the limits with the actual version. Isaacson also detailed Musk, who was pushing back against the design team, and went ahead deciding on the use of stainless steel for the truck. Isaacson said, quote, that allowed, and in some ways forced, the design team to explore ideas that were more futuristic, edgier, even jarring. Lucid Motors is expanding overseas. Lucid electric vehicles are now available for lease for the first time in Saudi Arabia. Now, this might seem like an odd choice for those of you who are new to the EV scene, but it makes a lot of sense if you know that the Saudi Arabia's public investment fund is Lucid's largest shareholder. Lucid revealed last year that the government of Saudi Arabia agreed to purchase at least 50,000 EVs over the next 10 years. The deal is part of the kingdom's Saudi Vision 2030 effort to reduce emissions and put the nation on track for a stable economic growth. Now, if you ask me, that's kind of rich considering that nearly half of the nation's GDP is in oil, but we'll put that aside. Now, further plans for Lucid Motors in the region are already underway. Al Swaha said that the major ownership in Lucid, quote, has placed the kingdom among developed countries. He added that construction has begun at Lucid's first manufacturing plant in the region last May. Full production is expected to start by 2024 with 155,000 vehicle manufacturing capacity per year once it's up and running. 
The Tata Group from India, which is the parent company behind Jaguar and Land Rover, is set to announce a new EV battery plant in West England. Tata's battery cell division, which is called Agratas, is building two factories, one of them in India and another one in Europe somewhere. Earlier this month, the company posted an opening for a UK-based battery factory position, which is a pretty good indicator. Last month, Jaguar Land Rover told investors it would partner with Agratas to supply battery packs that will deliver 455 miles of range, a significant increase from the previous versions. Okay, let's get in the HOV lane for some fast news. Volkswagen's U.S. Innovation Hub just announced what they're calling four breakthroughs in electric mobility and sustainable transport. They are artificial intelligence optimized EV battery pack frames, EV interiors made of paper, lightweight fiber composite body parts, and wireless EV fast charging. At Electric, we hope some of these make it into mass production and become cost-effective, but since Volkswagen has implemented a short-term spending freeze, it's probably not going to happen soon. Moving on. Stellantis has announced it has entered into agreements worth over $11.2 billion for semiconductors through 2030. The automaker says that they are building a comprehensive ecosystem to reduce the risk of running into supply chain shortages. We hope it works out for them. General Motors vows to ramp up EV production, a line that we have heard before, and Bollinger Motors, the EV truck startup that shifted to commercial vehicles, has begun pilot production of its B4 chassis cab vehicle. Their platform has now entered a design validation build phase. The initial rollout will begin with five fully assembled chassis cabs this summer, followed by another 15 or so in the third quarter of the year. In today's community comment found on YouTube, CCX Killer 13 says, China equals CCP. Now, I'm sorry, Mr. X Killer, but that is simply not true. I generally don't like to stay on off topics for the community comment for too long, but I'm afraid I can't resist or can't let it go. The CCP, or Chinese Communist Party, wants the world to believe that their rule over China is the same thing as Chinese people, Chinese language, or Chinese culture, and only the good parts of Chinese history. But that really is only done to serve their own ends as the communist gangsters that run the country. Fact of the matter is that the CCP has actively fought against Chinese written language by diluting its meaning. The CCP fought against its culture by literally eradicating its existence and practice, at least for one time. And the CCP has fought its own people on multiple occasions. And don't get me wrong, I'm under no illusions that the U.S. government is somehow pure in its dealings. But what I am getting at is that I don't equate people or culture or history or what we conceptually think of as China with the modern day ruling house that is over them. All the Chinese people that I have met are hardworking, practical, sometimes energetic, and always delightful people. And I really am fascinated by their history and their language, and in some cases their borders, geography, art, and so much. Historically, China has suffered greatly in the last couple of centuries and honestly, I fear that their sufferings are not over with the CCP rule. And when the CCP no longer rules them, as history will eventually prove will be correct, I very much hope that I can see that day. I might not. But at any rate, thanks for watching Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.